This is section 9.4 on the ratio test, and we're going to find the ratio of consecutive terms. This is a, a, this sequence here is increasing. 1 half 1, 3 halves 2, 5 halves 3. It's increasing by a half. This is an arithmetic sequence, making this an arithmetic series. But if we take, now we already know that it diverges because of the nth term test, but if we take 1 divided by 2, we get, or 1 half, we get 2. 3 halves divided by 1, we get 3 halves. 2 divided by 3 halves we get four thirds, but all of those ratios are greater than one, which means that the sequence is increasing and we have a divergent series. If everything was a two or all of them were the same, then if we take you know, the two divided by two, we have a ratio of one and we have a divergent series. Then if we have a convergent series, then if we take one fourth divided by a half, one eighth divided by one fourth and so on, all of the ratios would be less than one. So this would be a convergent geometric series. But in the end, we're saying that if a, a sub n plus one divided by a sub n, if that's less than one, then we have, then the terms must be decreasing. And that's what, um, that's what the ratio test says. So students will be able to uh, determine convergence or divergence using the ratio test. Now this is uh, in, in your packet, page 21. It says, let the series be a series of non-zero terms. And then the series converges if when we do the ratio test, the ratio is less than one. Then we have a convergent series. The series diverges if the ratio is greater than one. Now we said that when the ratio is equal to one, we have a divergent series, but the ratio test says if your if your uh, ratio is one, then it's inconclusive, and we just have to use something else to decide convergence. Series involving factorials and exponential functions work especially well with the ratio test. This is not geometric because of the n factorial. So we're gonna use the ratio test here. We're gonna do the limit as n approaches infinity, of the absolute value of, now we're supposed to do a sub 1 or n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial and then divided by the a sub n. So we're doing a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. So now we're going to divide by 2 to the n over n factorial, but instead of dividing, let's multiply by the reciprocal. So we have limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times n factorial over 2 to the n. Well, let's look at the 2s. The well, we have if we have 2 to the n plus 1, we have one extra 2 up here. Let's write the limit as n approaches infinity. An extra 2 up here. And then let's look at n factorial over n plus 1 factorial. And let's write out some numbers. What if n was 7? Uh, no, let's go. Let's go something smaller. 5 factorial. So let's go n is 5. Let's just say n is 5. Then we have 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 over 6 factorial because we have one more. So 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6. So this is really n factorial over n factorial because we have 1 through 5 here, but then times that n plus 1. So I'm going to write, here's what I'm going to write for the ratio test. We're going to write limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of 2 over n plus 1 for this reason right here. n factorial over n plus 1 factorial is going to leave n plus 1 because those are going to cancel out. That's the limit as n approaches infinity of, um, well, when we do, when we plug infinity in, uh, it ends up being 0. And zero is less than one, always. It's always less than zero. So we have uh, converges. Converges by ratio test. Let's look at our next one. Now this is not geometric because of the n squared. Otherwise it would be geometric. So let's do the limit as n approaches infinity of, let's go uh, n plus 1 squared times 3 to the, well, if we do this, we go 3 
to the n plus 1 plus 1, because we're adding 1 to n, then we have 3 to the n plus 2 over 2 to the n plus 1. Instead of dividing, let's just multiply by the reciprocal right away over n squared 3 to the n plus 1. So let's, let's uh, I don't know, let's write the n's. The n's don't really do much right now. Oh, I need limit. Limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of, we have n plus 1 squared over n squared. There's an extra 2 in the denominator, and there's an, yeah, 1 extra 3 in the numerator. But n squared over n squared is 1, so this is equal to the absolute value of 3 halves, which is greater than 1. So we can say diverges by ratio test. Example 3 here, limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of, let's go with uh, n plus 2 factorial. So we're plugging n plus 1 in for n, so we end up with n plus 2 over 3 to the n plus 1 times, instead of dividing, multiply by the reciprocal, over n plus 1 factorial. Well, this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of, there's an extra 3 in the denominator, so 3 down here, but we need to decide what how n plus 2 cancels with n plus 1. So let's say n is equal to 4. This would be um, this would be six factorial over five factorial, and the n plus two is actually six. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six factorial over one, two, three, four, five factorial. So this right here is the n plus one factorial. This is the n plus one factorial, and this is the next one, which would be n plus two. This ends up being just n plus 2 here. Now that ends up being infinity, which is greater than 1, so diverges by ratio test. Next size is 29 through 44. Determine the convergence or divergence of the series. Identify the test or tests you use. There may be more than one correct way to determine convergence or divergence of a given series. Here the limit as n approaches infinity of, ooh, what's popping up here? I don't, what, what is, huh? What's going on? I don't want that. There. Limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n over n plus 1 is equal to, why is that, no, go away, uh, is equal to infinity. So diverges by nth term test. This one, a sub, well, wouldn't this be negative 1 eighth? And then I'd multiply by, then the next one, uh, if I plug 2 in, it would be negative 1 over 64. So a sub 1 would be negative 1 eighth, and r is actually one eighth, not negative one eighth, because if it was negative, it alternate signs. So I just keep multiplying by one eighth. Well, the absolute value of one eighth is less than one, so this converges by the ratio. Uh, no, geometric series. Geometric series test. Next size 29 to 44, determine the convergence or divergence of the series. Identify the tests or tests you use, and so same instructions. Well, if I, if we go limit as n approaches infinity of this one, n sine of 1 over n, this is going to be infinity times sine of 0, which is infinity times 0, which is an indeterminate form. So let's write this as limit as n approaches infinity of sine of 1 over n over 1 over n. So we have that fraction that we need for L'Hopital's. So L'Hopital's limit as n approaches infinity of cosine of 1 over n times negative 1 over n squared 
over negative 1 over n squared. That's the limit as n approaches infinity of cosine of 1 over n, which is cosine of 0, which is 1, which is not 0, so diverges by the nth term test. Hmm, this one, let's think, let's look at this one. I think this is a ratio test. Limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of n plus 1, natural log of n plus 1, over 2 to the n plus 1, and then times 2 to the n over n natural log of n. Well, if we're going to go to infinity, the natural log of 1 billion 1 over the natural log of 1 billion is very close to 1. As a matter of fact, we'll consider it 1. And n plus 1 over n is also 1. So we end up with a limit as n approaches infinity of 1 half because there's an extra 2 down here, which is less than, which is, you know, it's equal to 1 half, which is less than 1. So converges by ratio test. Determine the convergence or divergence of the series. Identify the test. Uh, yeah, same and same instructions. So let's go. Um, let's go. Limit as n approaches infinity of n to the tenth over ten to the n. So let's think about four to the tenth versus um, ten to the fourth. Let's see what that would be. Do I have a calculator on this to investigate? I think I do. There we go. 4 to the 10th versus 10 to the 4th. So we can see that 4 to the 10th is definitely winning the race here. So that means that uh, this is headed to, what did I say, 4 to the 10th? Yeah, this is headed to infinity and diverges by nth term test. Here we have the limit as n approaches infinity, absolute value of uh, n plus 1 factorial over e to the n plus 1. Then we're going to multiply by e to the n over n factorial. Now we have the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 over uh, e. And that's equal to, well, n is going to go to infinity, so this is equal to infinity. That's definitely greater than 1, so this diverges by ratio test. Here's the exit ticket that uh, I would like you to do. Uh, determine whether each series converges or diverges. The factorial really gives this away that it's the ratio test. We have n plus 1 factorial squared n plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 times 2 to the n over n factorial square root of n. Well, this is going to be limit as n approaches infinity of, you know, with the n plus 1 factorial, it's like having 1 times 2 times 3 over 1 times 2. There's one more. So those cancel. That leaves that n plus 1 if, if n were to be 2. So n plus 1. And then we have square root of n plus 1 over square root of n, but there's an extra 2 in the denominator. Well, this, uh, you know, square root of a billion 1 over square root of a billion, that's very close to 1. So this ends up being equal to, well, we have, let's see, we got that extra. So this is 1, but we got that extra n plus 1 on the top. That's going to head to infinity, which is greater than 1. So this diverges by ratio test.
Let's see what we have here. Limit as n approaches infinity, absolute value of 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times n factorial over 2 to the n. Limit as n approaches infinity, we have an extra 2 on top, but now the n plus 1 ends up in the denominator, which this is equal to 0, which is greater than 1. So this series converges by ratio test. On the last one over here, let's slide this over, uh, a sub 1 is um, 3 halves and r is equal to 1 half. And the absolute value of 1 half is greater than, uh, less than 1. Absolute value of 1 half is less than 1. So this converges by a geometric series. Converges by geometric series. Geometric series. I, I got it. I got it. There we go. I think that's it. Yep.